Hello and welcome to a Tabletop Bellhop board game bag check. I am Mo Tuzano, the Tabletop Bellhop, your cardboard concierge, answering your gaming and game night questions and striving to make everyone's gaming experience better. The question I'm answering tonight is, what's in the box in regards to this? This is a shiny new sealed copy of the latest game from Good Games Publishing. This is Land vs. Sea. And first off, I do have to thank Good Games Publishing for sending us a review copy of this game. This is a game everyone is comparing to Carcassonne. It is a tile-laying game, two to four players, where you generally have the person trying to build the seas fighting against the person trying to build the land, with an interesting third-player rule where a cartographer is and a team-based four-player mode. No, I have not opened this. I have not played this game. It is available to try on Tabletop Simulator, so if you do want to check the game out, you can do that there. But I have not played the game before, nor have I seen the actual components of this other than what's on this box here. So just a quick overview. Again, this plays two to four players. It's only two minutes to learn, it claims. You're going to score by placing a tile to complete land or sea areas. Add scoring for connecting mountains or coral edges. And adjacent caravans and ships, too. Gather yeah, bonus points as you do. It plays in about 40 minutes. It says ages 14 plus. That seems ridiculous to me. Now, I do know this game comes out of Australia. Maybe they have some weird rules about age limits on board games because I don't see why this would be a 14 plus game. It does not seem that complicated. So that's about it for an overview. Let's take a look at what's in the box right after I cut the shrink. So here you have my copy of Land vs. Sea that I'm cracking open for the first time. I will note unique box size. It's kind of small. It's going to be interesting trying to get that to fit well with other games on my shelves. I don't expect a lot here. This is from Jean-Paul Jacques, again published by Good Games Publishing. Uh, we got a little plastic baggie sticking out the edge. That's a little annoying, but it's just minor. We have the rule book, which is surprisingly thick. Uh, nice, bright, colorful. Okay, there's a lot of art, so that, that kind of makes up for it. So here's an overview of the game. Um, then we got your first game, additional scoring. Two to three, four player modes. Then we have the setup. Again, lots of great artwork here for setting it up. Uh, we've got lots of examples. Actually, I think there's more space dedicated to art than text here. What legal and not legal placements are. And then getting into um, the, the special symbols that are on the tiles, which is play again or steal a tile from someone else. And then how to score. You are looking for a total of 11 pages, way more than I would thought for a game that takes two minutes to teach, but I really don't think it's all that complicated. Then there's some interesting optional rules. So the basic rules just score land versus sea. The optional rules involve like the coral reefs and the mountains and stuff, which we should see on the tiles. So we're just going to skip through that for these new optional rules. And then there's the three player mode, which I had mentioned earlier, adds a cartographer player. And then a four player mode, which is team based. On the back, we do have See, this is what I expect for the how to play. There's how to play the game with the basic rules right there. Nice and simple with some icons. Next, we have, oh nice, a little summary card on how to score the bonus stuff. So this is, kind of works with this, right? So grab this back just for a second. So this is the basic game. How to play the basic game. Well, this is the additional scoring for mountains and coral and for caravans and ships, which I just punched itself. <laughs> and we have, it's the same thing on both sides. I don't see... Oh, it's for number of players. So for three players and for two and four players. So again, three players, two and four players. What I really expected was a ton of hexes to punch, and that's not the case. They came pre-punched. Good Games Publishing is fantastic for that. This I actually think this is the first thing I've ever had to punch from them. So I'm just going to bring these up. Nice looking, right? Here's your scoring. I love how clear the blue and the yellow is, or the, the land, the tan. So we do have some wooden components with a silicon pack. Pro tip I like to mention whenever I find these is if you live anywhere that gets humid, keep these in your games. They actually do help remove humidity. Then we have wooden pieces. Um, there is a land tile, a sea tile. You're going to use these for scoring for one. And then there's a cartographer tile. And there are multiples of these for playing. One, one's for score and then there's a, the waypoint variant. As well as playing with four players, they recommend you use these. Now, this is an interesting touch I've never seen in a game before, except Dixit. Actually, sorry, I'll correct myself. Dixit had this. The scoring track is part of the board, which right now is upside down, but I'd obviously turn this around if I was playing the game. So you have our scoring track here. Then, the important part in any tile laying game, the tiles. We have a nice baggied 
stack of tiles here. And there shouldn't be anything else in the box. What I'm going to do is a little quick peek. Nothing. Just cardboard. What I do dig is if you're get if they did add expansion content, you could probably store it underneath there. Okay, I probably shouldn't open that. There we go. All right, we're going to put this off to the side because it's kind of distracting and bright. Same with these. I am not going to bother. Now nah, I'll put them back in the bag. We're going to save this silica packet because I actually put them on my game shelves in a specific spot. All right, let's look at some of these tiles. Probably won't open up all of them. Kind of, this feels like it's sealed in a way. Yeah, there we go. Technically, this isn't a resealable bag. I am not going to put these back in here. I'm just going to put them back in the box. Lots and lots of hexagons. All right, so here is a tile with the steel symbol on it. Sorry, I'm trying to get the... The camera doesn't like getting that close. As well as... Um, some rain clouds and some trees and that. So nothing else on this particular tile, at least at this point, maybe an expansion in effects play. On the other side, we've got a tower being attacked. Now these are little bonuses. The person who completes the area gets these bonus points, whereas land scores land that's completed and water scores water. So the person that completes it, which may not be the thing, gets those bonus points. And again, this, this sea monster doesn't actually matter. Um, it looks like we got the Starbucks mermaid here as well as a coral reef, which is part of one of the optional systems. And then on the other side, we have an awesome looking Kraken, a bonus score. Again, the Krakens and monsters, currently at least, do not do anything. So we have mountains. I gotta say, this looks like it'd be a lot of fun for making an RPG map. I am obviously not gonna go through every tile. So we have a ton of tiles here, multiple piles, all two-sided. Uh, Quality is really good. I like all the little details. Here, I'll show one of these off. That is the go again symbol. So when you play this tile, you get to play another tile as well as it's got some of the mountains and stuff on there. There's all kinds of nice little details on here. Again, we've got a sea monster with some coral. And then here's something I hadn't shown off yet. So there are shipping lanes for one of the advanced rules. There are ship-based shipping lanes. And there are also camels, which if I can find a camel, here we go, and land-based shipping lanes. Again, part of the advanced rules, the advanced scoring, you don't need them part of the normal, the basic game. That's it. It's kind of what I expected to see. Rule books thicker than I expected. A ton of tiles, built-in scoring board, some wooden tokens to keep track of score, as well as for one of the optional variant rules. Nice quality. The fact these are punched is a nice touch. You don't have to worry about little taggies or anything on the edges. Not at all disappointed by what I am seeing here. Looking forward to playing this game. Box inserts works, right? I don't see any complaints about this. Seems odd not to have like a divider or something for these, but you know what? The fact they're in a baggie, it works. These should now fit nice and flat on top. Rule book, and we're done. There you have what you get in the box for Land versus Sea from Good Games Publishing. A puzzle game for two to four players. So there you have it. What you get, Land versus Sea, Good Games Publishing, two to four player, tile laying game, Everyone's comparing this to Carcassonne. Looking forward to trying it myself to see what I think. I have to thank Good Games Publishing for sending us this. So right now, I'm going to try to play this tonight. So thank you for joining me while I crack open my copy of Land vs. Sea. You can find my content at tabletopbellhop.com. And all over the internet, you can find me as Tabletop Bellhop on word. Twitter, Instagram, all the usual places, Facebook or whatever, Meta, whatever it's called now. You can find me there too. Um, that's it for this unboxing video. Before you go, be sure to hit the subscribe and like button, ding the bell, whatever it is. I'm thinking of YouTube here. Hit the subscribe button and ding the bell to get notified when we go live. That's what happens on YouTube. If you're watching this anywhere else, be sure to like, heart, and do all those fun things that make content creators like myself happy. Good night and game on. <laughs>